Dennis Rodman, or better known by his nickname, The Worm, was one of the most entertaining and interesting players in the NBA. The multicolored hair, antics on the court, skipping games to go partying in Vegas, or teaming with Hulk Hogan during an NBA Finals series. He had his bad times, though, when he kicked a videographer because he accidentally fell on him. Despite all these antics, he was a tenacious defender, winning the Defensive Player of the Year award twice, and was one of the most, if not the best, junkyard dogs in NBA history. What I mean by that is his hustle and energy were unmatched. If you recall the Bad Boy Pistons era, they smacked the NBA. Literally. Lambeer, Mahorn, Sally, and coming off the bench you had Rodman, who made an impact despite not averaging 20 plus points or 10 plus assists. But he was a master at rebounding. When he was playing for the Chicago Bulls, Dennis led the league in total rebounds and rebounds per game for seven seasons, 1991 to 1998, at 16.7 rebounds per game. He's only six foot seven, by the way. Do you know how hard it is to get a rebound when you're facing giants like Shaq, Ewing, Mourning, and all those centers back in the 90s? To this day, he's the only player to ever be inducted into the Hall of Fame despite not averaging 20 plus points per game. That's called being a star in your role. In this video, we'll talk about NBA players and legends discussing how insanely good Dennis Rodman was. I'm going to discuss the point of view of these players about Rodman and his impact on the NBA. But before that, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and smash that notification bell to get updates on my latest NBA content. Make sure to watch until the end and find out the emotional speech he gave at his induction into the Hall of Fame. Let's get straight to the list. Number 1. Joe Dumars Joe Dumars was one of his teammates who mentored him while they won back-to-back -back titles in 1989 and 1990. Rodman helped make the identity of the Bad Boys Pistons because of his defense-first mentality, and Joe recognized that. Here's what he had to say. Whenever we went on the floor and we were in a deep championship series, this guy would be in his own world about winning. You just saw it dripping off of him and the passion for the game. He valued defense so much it made him emotional by winning his first Defensive Player of the Year award back in 1990. He couldn't contain the enjoyment of winning the award, so he had only a few words to say. I wanted this award so bad. If you thought that was emotional, wait till you see what he had to say in his Hall of Fame induction speech. Make sure to watch until the very end to see exactly what he had to say. Number 2. Scotty Pippen Remember the Eastern Conference Finals where the Chicago Bulls swept the Detroit Pistons? This next one, he gave them a clear cheap shot when they were facing each other, but years after they formed that big three of Michael Jordan, Rodman, and Pippen. Here's what Pippen had to say about Rodman. I followed Dennis's career, and he was one of the guys that helped motivate me coming from a small school knowing that I can make it in the NBA. He came out of Southeast Oklahoma great rebounder, and I realized then that I had an opportunity to play at the highest level. Kudos to Pippen to let bygones be bygones and just accept Rodman as his teammate. They wouldn't have three-peated for the second time if it wasn't for him. Number 3. Tracy McGrady and Paul Pierce after that episode in The Last Dance where Rodman took a hiatus during the regular season, by hiatus I mean living it up in Vegas and partying for 30 plus days, former NBA stars Tracy McGrady and Paul Pierce were asked what they thought of Rodman changing the Bulls or was it the other way around? I really believe Dennis changed the Bulls. In a system where you had great leadership, a great coach and teammates who demanded perfection, you had to give way to what Dennis brought to the court. As long as Dennis gave you 110% on the court, you could live with some of his off-the-court antics, Paul said. Tracy said his opinion about Rodman after. You should give respect to Phil Jackson for knowing his players. He was like, go ahead, man, take a couple of days off. Because they know when he's on that floor, in between those lines, he's going to give his 110% all the time. If you were in Rodman's shoes, would you ask your coach for a break and go to Vegas? Let me know in the comment section below. If that was me, I'd probably go. Number 4. Michael Jordan 
Well, we're on the topic of Rodman taking a break. When he came back, Coach Phil Jackson would do drills to the frustration and surprise of Michael Jordan. He was frustrated and surprised at Dennis Rodman because they had to run sprints to give Rodman some needed conditioning. Despite taking a break from basketball, he would outrun his teammates. Here's what MJ had to say in the show The Last Dance about Dennis. Phil's whole motivation is to get Dennis back in shape. Everybody starts running in a line. When Phil blows the whistle, the last player on the back of the line has to sprint to the front. You can't stop. Whoever is in the front had control of the pace. So I tell everybody in that group, whoever goes into the front, just walk. Dennis goes in the front. It took us four laps to catch up to him. Number five, David Robinson. A lot of you don't know the years where Rodman played for the San Antonio Spurs before going to the Chicago Bulls. His teammate David Robinson was interviewed and was asked about Dennis. He had nice things to say about him. I love Dennis, I really do. He's an unbelievable player, athletic, he was kind of like Superman, just a freak of nature. The guy could run all day long, never got tired, and was like the Energizer Bunny. I love having you next to me on the court because you always felt you had a warrior with you. On the court, he's a great teammate. Off of it was a different story, but he marches to the beat of his own drum. It is a shame, though, that he wasn't given the chance to be himself in San Antonio. Maybe they would have won one title in the 90s. Despite Dennis having all those off-court antics and issues, he was a great teammate. When it was time to play on the court, he left everything out there. You could see his emotions on the court. That's the reason why he was emotional in his Hall of Fame induction speech. I didn't play the game for the money. I didn't play to be famous. What you see here is an illusion of an individual that's colorful. I like to thank the NBA community for just having me in this building. This game has been very good to me. I could have been dead. I could have been a drug dealer. I was homeless. And a lot of you guys here know what it's like living in the projects. It took a lot of hard work and a lot of bumps and bruises to get out. I never had a father. My father left us early but that didn't stop me from persevering. I want to thank MJ, Pip, and Phil for accepting me for who I was. He thanked a lot of people that day, but what really got to me was telling his children he hoped he was a good individual and a great father figure to his kids, despite not having a father growing up. Now you know what NBA players and legends are saying about how insanely good Dennis Rodman was. What are your thoughts about him? Would you take a break in the middle of the season and go to Vegas if given the chance? Tell us what you think in the comments down below. And once again, make sure to leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button to watch out for the best NBA content. If you like this video, you'll like my other video where I talked about NBA players and legends discussing the greatness of Michael Jordan. Thank you for watching.